If you're tired of being a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck, then this is the video for you. That pharaoh taught you how to talk, I'm here to teach you how to duel. Welcome to Kaiba Talks. In this series we'll cover the top decks of the Edison meta and how to win against them. If you couldn't tell from the deck list we're covering Hero Beat. Hero Beat is an aggressive deck that revolves around elemental hero Neos Alias. Alias is a 1900 light Gemini monster, which allow Hero Beat access to cards such as Honest, Hero Blast, Gemini Spark, and of course Miracle Fusion. There are two types of Hero Beat decks in Edison format, Hero Beat and the recently popular Diva Hero Beat. Diva Hero Beat differs from regular Hero Beat in that it plays Deep Sea Diva along with multiple copies of Spined Gilman in order to give the deck access to Synchros and make Miracle Fusion into Absolute Zero more consistent. Hero Beat decks are the core of fundamental Yu-Gi-Oh! Their game plan to out-resource their opponent is simple yet very effective, especially in the hands of a good player. Hero Beat decks play a wide margin of trap cards and often protect them with cards such as Solemn Judgment, Dark Bribe, and Starlight Road. Although Hero Beat is very consistent, it is not without its weaknesses. Generally, Hero Beat decks run a very small monster count. However, this is usually not an issue due to the multitude of search cards they play such as Reinforcement of the Army and E-Emergency Call. Additionally, Hero Beat decks tend to overdepend on their spell and trap cards. So with wise and effective removal, Hero Beat can struggle. Lastly, despite the namesake, Hero Beat decks have a hard time beating over monsters with a high attack or defense. Thus, those monsters can wall Hero Beat decks for a number of turns. Okay, duelists, listen closely because I'm only going to say this once. In Yu-Gi-Oh, there are more games 2 and 3 than there are games 1, so it's important to know how to side. Generally, when side decking, there are two things to keep in mind. 1. Do not side out your engine or else your deck won't perform as it should. 2. Do not over side deck because it will throw off the balance of your deck. In most cases, siding around 5 cards per matchup is enough. Against Hero Beat, consider siding out these cards. Caius the Shadow Monarch. Unless you're playing Monarchs, Caius can be difficult to summon as it requires one resource to tribute. Moreover, even when the summon is successful, there is a high chance the Hero Beat player will activate a card such as Bottomless or Gemini Spark to make your Caius summon almost irrelevant. Low Attack and Low Impact Monsters If you're playing Penguin Soldier in your deck, you shouldn't be watching this video because you're not playing to win. Although rumor has it, a true hero once topped Deck Devastators 3 with Penguin Soldier. Anyway, low attack and low impact monsters such as Bora or Veyu should be sided out. Hero Beat can easily run over a lot of these monsters, so swap them out for cards that are more beneficial in this matchup. Book of Moon. This card does little to stop any of Hero Beat's plays. Of course, this can be used to stop Synchros and play around Honest, but oftentimes Hero Beat will have back rows to save their monsters from destruction, resulting in a minus one for you. Brain Control. Although this is the most broken card in the format, Gemini Spark reduces its viability. Consider siding this card out as a last resort option. Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Wing Blast has little value in the Hero Beat matchup. It's best used to return set spells and traps to go for a safe push. Rather than using two cards to get rid of one card, it would be better to side this out. Royal Oppression. Despite being able to stop Miracle and Future Fusion, this card is not practical against Hero Beat, as Hero Beat doesn't need to special summon to win. As Hero Beat is not reliant on special summoning, most Hero Beat decks either side or main Royal Oppression. Solemn Judgment. As amazing as Solemn is, this card can be a double-edged sword, especially against aggro decks. By reducing your life points in half, Hero Beat can easily bring them down to zero with their army of high attack monsters. Use Solemn Judgment with caution if you decide to not side this card out. Starlight Road. Most Hero Beat players do not main Heavy Storm as it conflicts with the synergy of the deck. That said, Starlight Road can still be used to guard against Mirror Force and Torrential, but it would be better to exchange this card for one that either negates or destroys other spell and traps instead. Threatening Roar. Hero Beat is not an OTK deck, therefore cards like Threatening Roar, Waboku, and in some cases Mirror Force are not useful in this matchup. 
Mirror Force is often a one-for-one -one against Hero Beat, so it's worth considering siding out for a more impactful card. Trap Dust Shoot. When Trap Dust Shoot resolves against Hero Beat, the opposing player has a high chance of winning that game due to two reasons. One Hero Beat generally has a shortage of monsters, and two, the opposing player can now play around all the traps that have been revealed. Despite these pros, Trap Dust Shoot is a high-risk, high-reward card against Hero Beat. Hero Beat tends to set a lot of back rows, thus making Dust Shoot's activation requirement difficult to resolve. For this reason, it is not worth having a potentially dead card, so it is recommended to side this card out games 2 and 3. Against Hero Beat, consider siding in these cards, Cyber Dragon. With 2100 attack, Cyber Dragon outs every main decked monster in Hero Beat. Cyber Dragon is good at baiting out back rows as it doesn't require your normal summon. DD Crow. A well-timed crow can put the hero deck in an unfortunate situation. It's best used as a chain to the activation of Hero Blast or Miracle Fusion. If Alias is removed, Hero Blast will not resolve. Keep in mind Miracle Fusion doesn't banish for cost, so if the Hero Beat player has other targets that can be banished, it will still resolve. As Crow is a very situational card, I wouldn't recommend siding in more than one of this card for this matchup. Gourds. This card has both a high attack and defense, thus if dropped on a direct alias attack, Gores can wall offensively, and the Gores token can wall defensively, presenting two simultaneous threats for Hero Beat to overcome. Puppet Plant. Although this card has not seen much play in the current Edison meta, it is very good against Hero Beat, as all of their relevant monsters are warriors. It is also better than Brain Control, as you don't have to pay life points or commit a card to the field to activate it. Snowman Eater. With 1900 defense and an effect that can out even the boss monsters of the hero deck, this card is an excellent defensive wall. Super Polymerization. Super Poly has the potential to be a great out to hero beat. It does fall short because the only relevant extra deck monster you can fusion summon is Absolute Zero, which means you have to sacrifice space in both your side and extra deck to make this card applicable. Moreover, if you use two of their monsters to make absolute zero, more than likely you will use their zero as a water fusion material, which will resolve when sent to the graveyard, clearing your newly summoned absolute zero. Prohibition. Although this is often seen as a joke card, it's quite effective against hero beat. Calling elemental hero Neo's alias prevents the hero beat player from using hero blast, Gemini Spark, and it makes it harder resolve honest and miracle fusion. Another option is to declare Miracle Fusion with Prohibition instead, as this will stop both Absolute Zero and Elemental Hero Gaia. Mystical Space Typhoon, Dust Tornado, Malevolent Catastrophe, Trap Stun, and Royal Decree. As mentioned previously, Hero Beat is very dependent on their spell and trap cards to make plays and protect their monsters. Therefore, siding in cards to either destroy or negate spell and trap cards is a very effective strategy to combat Hero Beat. Although Heavy Storm isn't pictured here, it should be included as well if you're not already main decking it. Bottomless Trap Hole. This card is very powerful against Hero Beat, as the majority of their monsters are susceptible to Bottomless, Drastic Drop-Off, and Mind Crush. As Hero Beat is a deck that constantly searches a well-timed Drastic Drop-Off or Mind Crush, is not difficult to pull off. For more advice on how to use Mind Crush properly, watch that Pharaoh series Yugi Talks Mind Crush. What up YouTube, it's your boy True Hero, and today I'm playing my boy Mickey Stang, and he's using the hero deck, and I'm using, of course, Diva Hero, you already know. But from this video, I'm going to showcase you how to play against the hero beat deck. Now, as Kaba's already told you, these days, hero beat is rising in popularity, so you have to know how to play against it. Now, the thing to understand is there's actually two different versions of the Hero Beat deck. There's the general Hero Beat deck, and there's also the Diva Hero Beat deck. The list that Stango is playing is the same list that came in second place at RBET2 of season two. So Column's deck list. Now, unbeknownst to me, Stango opened up actually quite bad with Double Spine Gilman in his hand. But from my perspective, all I can see is Alias and two back rows. Now against Diva Hero Beat, 
you always have to be wary of cards such as Solemn Judgment and especially Starlight Road. Sometimes they may or may not play Dark Bribe, but Starlight Road is the card that can really change the game around. Actually, Starlight Road is so broken that if it is successfully resolved by your opponent, more than likely, the advantage that they'll gain from negating your card and summoning a Stardust will be so great that they'll more than likely win that duel. Starlight Road is an absolutely busted card. However, despite being broken, the one thing that you have to remember is it doesn't do anything. It's actually just a placeholder. Among the five zones, it just takes up a zone and it doesn't do anything unless you play a card that wipes the board such as Mirror Force Torrential or Heavy Storm to clear the back rows. So as long as you keep that in mind and you try to one for one as best as you can, you can play around Starlight Road. However, what ultimately happens is the game sometimes comes to a point where you can no longer play around that card and if you have Heavy Storm, you just have to play it. Now looking at my opening hand here, as you can see, it's not very good. So Stango, in a way he bricked but I would say that my opening hand is much worse. However, I do have a lot of back row destruction, which is really good, but I don't have anything that can beat over 19. So I'm forced to just draw and pass. Now Stango, of course, reads that I have a Gorus, so he doesn't attack. And I draw onto Rhoda, which is an amazing draw because now Rhoda makes this hand completely live. So at this point, what I have to do is do my best to play around Starlight Road. So I play MST first and with MST I hit Mirror Force. But look at my hand. I cannot afford to wait. If he has Starlight Road, Solemn Judgment, Dark Bribe, then I just have to play into it at this point. By playing MST first, then there's a chance of me sniping that card, but I was unsuccessful. So I played Heavy Storm and then you can see actually he didn't have any of those cards. So sometimes hero beat players can try to psych you out and make you think that they have a card to protect their back rows when in reality they don't. So when it comes to playing Heavy Storm, you have to make an accurate read of the game state. Do I have to play Heavy Storm in order to win? And if the answer is yes, you play it. If the answer is no, consider holding it and taking out their back rows one by one. And if you snipe one of the aforementioned cards, at that point, you can play Heavy Storm. So after this Heavy Storm, as you can see, this game was over. Because I'm able to make Stardust go you and dad with that. Okay, so game two. Now, when you take a look at our opening hands, Stengo opened up much better this game than the previous game. He has Future Fusion with Double Miracle Fusion, D-Prison, and Trap Dust Shoot. Now, my opening hand is not bad. It's actually quite mid. However, it's not built to handle Stango's strong opening. So he plays Future Fusion and he sends Stratos and Ocean. The reason why he sends Stratos is because by sending Stratos, he can get it from the graveyard with Ocean's effect. Generally, when Hero Beat players summon Ocean, they set a battle trap behind it in order to resolve its effect during the standby phase, which allows them to grab a hero from the field or graveyard and place it in their hand. Now Stango, he sets both his back rows and he passes and Dust shoots me immediately. And that puts me in a very awkward situation because he sends back my diva. And now my hand went from mid to bad. And he can see in my hand, I have Deck Devi and Mirror Force. Two cards which don't do much in this current game state. So he sends back my D.Va and now I have two options. I can either summon Cyber Dragon and run over or I can Special Prodigy and Sack for Malicious. As I just mentioned, generally D.Va Hero Beat players or Hero Beat players in general will not summon Ocean without a Battle Trap, a card such as Mirror Force, D prison or book a moon to protect it. So I don't want to just lose my cyber dragon to anything. So I take a moment to think and what I ultimately decide to do is special summon prodigy and sack for malicious 
and I do not set any back rows. Reason being is because I cannot prevent him from getting Stratos out the grave. And when he summons Stratos, if I have a back row, he'll be tempted to activate Stratos' pop effect and destroy my face down back row. So I special prodigy, I sack for malicious, and on the end phase I draw Deep Sea Diva, which is really good because now, next turn, I have options. So my opponent summons Stratos, searches out Alien, Alias, and he's not really too worried about what I can draw into. Of course, the possibility existed that I could pull into Gores, but it's quite unlikely. So he attacks direct with both. Still though, I think it was a misplay because he was doing the same amount of damage either way if he attacks over Alias with Stratos and then attacks direct with Ocean. It's the same amount of damage either way, but the way he did it just makes it so if I did happen to pull into Gores, he would be in a much worse situation. Now my turn, I pull into Caius. Caius is not super helpful here, but I have two plays here. One play that I can do is I can go for the Black Rose play, but I have a read my opponent has Starlight Road. Another play that I can do is go for the Caius play, but the Caius play doesn't help me against an absolute zero. So I go for a very unique play. Now, if you have a read your opponent has Starlight Road, one good counter to Starlight Road is actually Stardust Dragon. So what I could have done is Special Summon Cyber, Normal Summon Diva, get Diva, Banish Mali for Mali, Synchro into Stardust, then Synchro into Black Rose, activate Black Rose effect, and blow up. If my opponent activates Starlight Road, I can tribute Stardust to negate his Starlight Road and he'll lose his whole field. However, one reason why I did not go for that play is because though that play clears his whole field, one thing that Stango could do is simply not activate Starlight Road. And by not activating Starlight Road, I lose everything. I lose Stardust and I lose Black Rose. And my opponent's graveyard is already set up, so if he plays a card like Miracle Fusion, yes, I have Mirror Force to counter, but it still puts me in an awkward situation. So rather than losing everything, I go for the unique play, which is first, testing to see if he really does have Starlight Road. So I special summon Cyber, normal summon Diva to get Diva, and I go for the Black Rose. If this Black Rose goes off, cool. If he activates Starlight Road, I have a contingency plan. So he does indeed have Starlight Road, so I'm forced to go into my contingency plan. And the reason why my contingency plan isn't bad is because I'm able to make Darken Dragon to send his Stardust, and now my deck devastation virus becomes live. So I make Darken, I send his Stardust, and I set Deck Devi, along with Mirror Force. The reason why I don't attack is because I can't afford to run into a Battle Trap. As I said before, I had to read that he had a battle trap previously, so the game state hasn't changed. So there's no reason for me to go back on my first read and think now all of a sudden he doesn't have a battle trap. On Stango's draw phase, I activate Deck Devi. And the reason why I do it in the draw phase is because if I wait until standby phase, he'll be able to activate and resolve his Ocean's Effect again. And that'll just put me too far behind this game. Now, Deck Devastation Virus is actually quite good against the D.Va Hero Beat because there are only four monsters which do not get hit by it. And that, of course, being Stratos and the Triple Alias. But the rest of the deck gets absolutely devastated by Deck Devastation Virus. Not to mention, one thing you need to keep in mind, with Deck Devastation Virus, you'll have hand knowledge. So you'll be able to play around your opponent's cards, such as D Prison or Starlight Road, much more effectively. The only drawback is, if your opponent has one of the four monsters that I mentioned, they won't get hit. And Deck Devastation Virus will turn on your opponent's Miracle Fusions because their Divas are getting hit and their weak hero monsters, such as Ocean, are getting hit. So. I activate Deck Devi and I'm able to see what he has. And when I looked at his open hand, I already knew that this game is over. Now Stango knows that I have Mirror Force because 
he saw my hand with Trap Dust Shoot. Whether or not I had it set, that's a different story. But he knows there's a possibility that I do have Mirror Force set. So he actually decides to summon Zero in defense mode, which is a really good play. He attacks direct for 18, and I'm forced to just to take it. I draw into Torrential. I don't even shuffle my hand. I set it, and I pass. And now on Stango's turn, he plays a little awkwardly. As I said, he knows that I have Mirror Force because he saw my hand from Trap Dust Shoot. And what he does is he actually switches his Zero to attack mode, which now I have to activate Mirror Force. And the reason why this play is awkward is because, just like I said before with my Darken play, I had to read that he had a Battle Trap. And look, he did, which is Deep Prison. If Stango had to read that I had a Battle Trap being Mirror Force, because he saw my hand, then he needs to be consistent with his play, right? And this isn't just for Stango, but it's for any Yu-Gi-Oh player. Once you make a read on your opponent, stick to that read. Don't suddenly change things up because now things will get worse. The only time that you should change is if the game state changes in a way that forces you to play your cards. So I mirror force here and I get great value out of it and Stango activates his second Miracle Fusion. Now, or rather first Miracle Fusion. Now since Stango had double Miracle Fusion, what I would have done is on his turn is just activate, is rather just got mirror force to turn prior because you have so much card advantage and you also have another miracle fusion anyway he summons miracle fusion and on my turn i draw and i pass i draw into my own miracle fusion but i know that since i have torrential set he cannot kill me with absolute zero so i just draw and i pass i take 25 and on my turn i draw into return and return is exactly the card that i needed because it gives me a potential chance to win the game. Stango's still under Dex Devastation Virus, so the Honest that he drew will get sent to the grave. And I need to put a monster on the board. Reason being because I'll lose. So, his Honest gets sent to the grave, activate Miracle Fusion, I summon Zero, and I set Return, and I pass. On his go, he unfortunately has a quick lapse in judgment. He activates Miracle Fusion to clear my Absolute Zero, which it does. However, once my absolute zero goes to the grave, it'll trigger and destroy his newly summoned absolute zero. So all Stango had to do really was just attack. But anyway, this worked out for my betterment and now all three of his absolute zeros are gone. So Stango goes for the game shot and he summons alias and I just flip up torrential. I have to because I'm at 1200 life points. So even a sneeze will kill me. On my turn, I draw on the Smashing Ground, but I can't afford to wait. Even though I want to wait, because by waiting, I can actually Synchro with Prodigy or banish more cards with Miracle Fusion to make this return for game. However, it's called Hero Beat. The deck has a plethora of monsters, so I'm forced to return now. So I return, and I actually make Colossal Fighter. The reason I make Colossal Fighter over Stardust or... Thought Ruler is because Stardust does not play around D Prison. And I know he has a D Prison because I saw it with Deck Devi. And whereas Thought Ruler does play around D Prison, look at my life points. I'm only at 600, which means when I attack and he activates D Prison, I will not be able to pay the cost of a thousand life points to negate and destroy the D Prison. So I need to stall. So I make Colossal and I put him in defense mode. Now, main phase two, after attacking, I sack for Caius. And the reason why I sack for Caius is because one, this prodigy is going to get banished by return's effect. And two, by summoning Caius, I can bait out his pulling the rug. I knew that he had it because of, once again, deck devastation virus. And the card that I essentially want to protect is Stratos because Stratos is really good. I can search out another prodigy, which can help lead to a potential victory. So anyway, Caius gets blown out by pulling the rug and we're in a draw pass situation. He activates E call and I can't do anything because he has D prison. So there's no attacks that can be made by me until I pull either 
Heavy Storm, or Royal Decree. So I actually decide to start for Decree. And the reason why I start for Decree and not Heavy Storm is because if I play Heavy Storm, I clear his back rows now, in the present moment. But as the game continues to go on, if he pulls more back rows, I won't be able to out them. Not to mention, Colossal Fighter behind Decree for heroes is very hard to out. There are a limited number of cards that can out Colossal Fighter behind Decree. Honest, though it doesn't out Colossal Fighter Decree, it actually would be game. So Stango would need to pull a Gemini Spark in order to out this combo. So I Sark for Decree and I pass. And once again, we're just in a draw pass game state. I pull into Gorus, which is very useless here because I'm at 600, so I'm never gonna get a chance to drop him. And on the turn that I get the Kree off Sark, I pull into Heavy Storm, which is perfect. Because now I can Heavy Storm, clear all his back rows. I'm not worried about Starlight Road because he resolved the Starlight Road previously. The odds of him having another Starlight Road are quite low. And I set the Kree. Now, I begin to start attacking with Colossal Fighter because I can't play around Honest. If I try to play around Honest, I'm just going to lose. Not to mention, one Honest is already in the grave. So the odds of him drawing to a second honest are quite low. So I switch Colossal, I attack, I set the Kree, and I'm in a really strong position. But off the top, Stango pulls the exact card that he needs, which is Neo Spatian Grand Mole. And this card absolutely ruins decks that rely on summoning monsters from the extra deck, such as Absolute Zero or even Value Turbo. So he pulls into Grand Mall and Colossal Fighter becomes a subpar fighter. He gets sent back to the extra deck and there's nothing I can do about it. I draw a Dark Arm, which is completely dead because I have an infinite number of darks. But thankfully, one thing that I did not draw into this game was Spine Gilman. So I set Sangan and I search out the Diva and he passes. I'm not worried about his back row because I have the Kree. And for turn, I pull into Cyber Dragon. Now, Cataster is really good against the Hero Beat deck because they don't really summon dark monsters. However, I also want to put in as much damage as possible because he's at 77 and I'm at 600. So I want to make Magical Android instead of Cataster because one, Android is stronger. Two, my life points will be above the range for me to play a card like Brain Control. And three, if I make Cataster, I cannot summon Cyber Dragon. By summoning Cyber Dragon with Cataster on the field, my opponent can just easily contact and clear both of my cards. So Cataster is not the best option in this case, but rather Android is. So I summon Cyber, smashing, because I want to play around Honest, and I make Magical Android. I attack direct for both, and he takes a lot. Now, I know he has Grand Mole, but I'm not too worried about him Grand Moling my Android because he'll take it 21. And obviously, I'm not worried about him Grand Moling a Cyber. But he has Deep Sea Diva, which is a really good draw. So he Deep Sea Divas, he makes Cataster, and here uh, does perhaps a bit of a misplay. Instead of attacking the Cyber Dragon, what he could have done is attack Android and then contact into Chimera Attack. And now my board is completely clear. But. He leaves my Android on the field, which gives me a chance to win. Because look at the game state. I've ruined the Kree set, and he more than likely has two traps card set. And in my graveyard, I only have one Caius. So if I pull Caius for turn, I can just draw, sack Android for Caius, Caius banish his Cataster, attack direct 34, GG. But things didn't play out that way. I pulled into Dark Greffer. Now, once again, I know that he has Grand Mole, so I have to summon Dark Greffer. If I don't summon Dark Greffer, then on his turn, he summons Grand Mole, returns Android, attack direct for Cataster, game. Nothing I can do. So, I summon Greffer, and I pitch Dark Arm because it's dead, and I send Plague. The problem is, even with sending Plague to the grave, it doesn't do anything, because I can sack for Brio, but I have no cards to pitch. I can make Goyu, but Goyu and Android can't deal with Cataster. So the best play that I can do is just simply to summon Greffer, pitch Plague, and it hopes that next turn 
I can potentially make a level six synchro that can handle the game state. So my opponent summons Alias, he kills both of my cards and that drops me down to 16. I draw for turn Rhoda, which is a really good draw because Stratos allows me to get the plus. And this is exactly what I wanted to do from before. So I Stratos plus and I search out the Prodigy. Problem once again is here I can make Brio, but Brio doesn't quite solve the problem. But I don't have a choice. If I don't make Brio now, the game's over. So I go for the Brionic play and I return his Cataster and I run over his alias. So what this actually allows me to do is potentially win because he's going to summon, return my Brio, I'm going to draw my Gores, and if he doesn't have a monster, then I can draw into another monster. So he summons, he returns Brio, I draw Gores, which is dead, but he does have another monster and that's GG. Okay, so game three. Now, game three, my opening hand is quite good. Even though at first glance it might not seem good because of Spine Gilman and a lack of monsters, I have Rhoda. And Rhoda will essentially search out the hero, which means my opening hand is a hero on water. And if I pull into any Miracle Fusion for the remainder of this duel, they'll be live. Not to mention, Royal Decree will shut out any traps that he has. Now looking at his hand in the replay, I can see he actually has three trap cards. So Royal Decree is about to go ham. But let's talk about my plays and why I do them. Hero Beat is called Hero Beat for a reason. Their monsters are very strong, which means although I can go first turn Rhoda into Stratos and add a card, it's not the best option because my Stratos would just give my opponent a plus one. No matter which monster I summon, Stratos or Spine Gilman, my opponent will be able to easily run it over. Plus, there's also the possibility that I don't want to Rota for Stratos, though it'll give me a hero. Because if my next card is a, something like Plague or Malicious, then Rota, Rotaring for Greffer would actually be the better choice. So instead of summoning a monster that can just get ran over and give my opponent a free plus one, I set Deck Devi and I set Decree and I pass. My opponent Rotas for Stratos, summons Stratos, searches out Ocean to make his Miracle Fusion live. He attacks direct for 18, sets three, and end phase, I decree. Which is really good because all three of these are trap cards. Now I draw for turn and this worked out perfectly because now I have two options. I can either make a level six or I can crash out with Stratos. So what I decide to do is, of course, make a level six. So I make Goyu, attack direct with Diva. I'm not worried about his back rows because I have Decree. So I do 3,000 points of damage and I summon Colossal. And the reason why I summon Colossal Fighter is because without the use of traps, it'll be very difficult for Hero Beat to out Colossal Fighter. One of the only few outs, of course, would be Miracle Fusion and Gemini Spark. Aside from those two cards, it'll be difficult for him to get rid of Colossal Fighter. So my opponent draws for turn and he has the out. Once again, this is the second time this set that Colossal Fighter has fallen to Neospatian Grand Mole. And that puts me in a really awkward situation. So now, of course, the card that I want to rota for is Stratos because I don't mind if Stratos gets sent back to my hand because then I can continue to plus which each and every additional summon. So I summon Stratos, I add Prodigy, I swing for 18, and on my opponent's draw, he pulls into Alias. Now, he doesn't need Alias because he can make actually an Android. So he makes Android and he runs over my Stratos and it puts me in an awkward spot. But then I draw Miracle Fusion for turn. Now, look at my graveyard. I have one hero and two waters which means that if I activate Miracle Fusion Raw, my opponent can chain DD Crow, banish Stratos, and my Miracle Fusion will fizzle. So rather than just activating Miracle Fusion Raw, first I special summon Prodigy, then I normal summon Gilman and activate Miracle Fusion. This makes it so 
Even if my opponent crows my Stratos, I can banish the Prodigy from the field to make absolute zero because I need to find a way to out this Android. So I make zero and I do a lot of damage by attacking direct with all three monsters. So now I'm in a very strong situation because if my opponent summons Grand Mole and returns my zero, then it's game. I'll just attack direct with Spine Gilman for game. So on my turn, on my opponent's turn rather, he summons Alias and he runs over my Gilman. So I draw for turn and I pull Caius. And that seals the game. Because with the draw of Caius, all I have to do is sack Prodigy for Caius. And I'm not worried about his traps because of Royal Decree. And that's GG. So guys, I hope that was helpful how to beat Hero Beat, especially from a Diva Hero perspective. However, you can still apply a lot of the concepts that I explained with any matchup. Remember, be patient against Diva Hero and try your best to play around their power cards, such as Miracle Fusion, Honest, and of course, as you've seen, the MVP, Neo Space and Grand Mole. Anyway, with that, guys, a true hero signing out. Peace. Subscribe or you too will be sent to the Shadow Realm.